This uh, webcast is uh, going to have a look at moderation and mediation. First thing you need to do is go to Andrew Hayes's website and download his process tool. So uh, at the moment this is stored on the website for uh, his new book called Introduction to Mediation, Moderation and Conditional Process Analysis, uh, which incidentally is a fantastic book and uh, I heartily recommend uh, that you get a copy. Um, it's also very, very good uh, way to follow up uh, my book chapter on mediation because uh, mine will do some basic stuff but uh, his book talks about much more complex um, models and things like that and goes into a lot more detail. But it's a great book. So if you can find this website and then you just scroll down to uh, this section here where it says process for SPSS and SAS and you download uh, this zip file. So just click on the download. It will uh, download your computer somewhere and then unzip that file and uh, then you'll have the file that you need to uh, load into SPSS and that's what we'll have a look at now. If you're on Windows what you need to do is open SPSS as an administrator. Now this is really important if you don't run it as an administrator none of this will work. So in Windows you start off uh, or you would start off finding SPSS in your in your kind of programs. Um, it might not necessarily be called version 20, I just happen to have version 20 on uh, my PC that I use for getting PC screenshots. Um, so you click on or right click on that and then you'll get this dialog box here which normally you know you might just sort of open it uh, but we want to select this thing here, run as an administrator. So if you click on that, I mean, nothing much will change. SPSS will kind of open up in the normal way, but it opens up um, giving SPSS access to your computer. So it allows it to kind of uh, change things. And uh, that's important because when we load this process tool, SPSS needs to change things on your system. So you've got to run it as an administrator. You, uh, it's such a long time since I used Windows, I can't remember. It may throw up some dialog boxes saying, are you sure you want to run as an administrator or do you want to let SPSS uh, wreak havoc on your computer or whatever? Um, the answer to that is yes, you do. Uh, SPSS needs to wreak havoc on your computer. So once you're in SPSS, what you need to do is go to the utilities menu and then select custom dialog box, uh, sorry, custom dialogs and then you want to select install custom dialog. So if you click on that, you'll get a, uh, a standard dialog box to, for opening files. Uh, now I've started the process tool on my desktop, but basically you just need to go and find this file. So this is the uh, one of the files, when you unzipped uh, the zip file from Andrew Hayes' website, one of the files within it is this thing here, process spd.spd. And you just open that, and uh, well, I'm getting an error message because I've already I'd already previously installed it on my system. Um, but basically, what will happen is that will then install the dialog box for you. So there you go, it's installed it. I've just overwritten my previous version. So then, what happens is in the analyze menu. Now, when you go to regression, what you'll find is there is a new uh, a new additional item in your menu. So this wouldn't have been there before. Um, and it's it's only there because we've now installed this custom dialog box and that is uh, the, the process menu by Andrew Hayes. So that's what we'll use to run um, our moderation and mediation models. Actually we'll deal with moderation first. So the example used in the book chapter is uh, whether there's a link between video gaming and aggression because there's quite a lot of research that seems to uh, like to try to suggest that the more video games you play uh, or violent video games especially, the more aggressive uh, you may behave. So there's, there's a link to kind of externalizing disorders and conduct problems. So you might have a situation where you, you basically have a relationship, a well-established relationship between um, say video game use, which you've maybe measured on a continuum, so how many hours a week that someone plays, uh, and an outcome of say aggressive behavior. Now moderation would be where we're talking about some other variable changing that relationship. So the relationship between video game use and aggressive behaviour is changed in some way, shape or form by some other variable. 
So in the example of the book, in the book, the other variable we had uh, are callous and unemotional traits. So this is a, a dispositional um, kind of tendency to basically not be a very nice person. Uh, and that's also been linked to conduct problems and externalizing problems. So it kind of makes sense that there might be some kind of uh, kind of complex relationship going on between uh, conduct problems or aggressive behavior, video game use, and these uh, callous unemotional traits. Now what moderation implies is if you if you look at kind of what it means theoretically, you've got some kind of predictor. In our case, that's going to be video game use, some kind of outcome variable, which is going to, in our case, be aggression. And the moderator, these callous unemotional traits, they moderate this relationship. So we've got this kind of arrow between our predictor and our outcome. So that's a, you know, li literally kind of, you can imagine that as sort of a... a correlation or a beta in a regression model so there's a, a quantified relationship between video games and aggression and what we're saying is the the size or the nature of that relationship changes as a function of callous and unemotional traits so there's a few ways that this could work now first of all it's possibly easiest to explain if you imagine that uh, callous unemotional traits is a categorical variable so you either have them you're a, you're a callous person or you don't have them, you're not a callous person. So if we were to uh, collect data, uh, about number of hours playing video games, uh, aggressive tendencies, and then we classify people as having these callous unemotional traits or not, so they fall into one or two groups, then we might see something like this graph. So what this shows us is that the relationship between uh, video games and aggression, playing video games and aggression, for non-callous people um, is actually pretty much a flat line. So it's the red line in this uh, graph here. So it's this, this is not gonna make it much clearer, but there you go, it's that, it's that red line there. So it's a flat line, there's no relationship there at all pretty much. So it doesn't matter how many hours you play video games, if you don't have callous and emotional traits, you don't, um, you don't show greater signs of aggression. However, for our group who do have callous and emotional traits, we see this blue line here. <laughs> I'm drawing on this with a mouse, which is not the easiest thing in the world to do. And I'm doing it left-handed when I'm right-handed. Don't ask why. Um, so for our callous group, there is a positive relationship. So we get this kind of blue line showing a very distinctive positive relationship. So this is a, an example of moderation. So the relationship between playing video games and aggression is different. It changes depending on whether you're callous or not callous. So that's what moderation is. It's kind of saying the relationship between two variables, sort of, in this case, differs across the two groups. In one group, it's, it's virtually zero. In the other group, it's kind of positive. But it changes in some way. Now, the more complex way to look at this is if we imagine that callous unemotional traits are measured on a continuum. And uh, we can display this graphically like this. So um, I should say this diagram took me a whole day uh, to create, which I'm not sure what that says, but anyway. Um, so we've got a situation on the left-hand side of the screen. So this one over here, still using the left hand there, uh, of no moderation. So uh, basically it's a, it's a situation where callous unemotional traits do not moderate the relationship between video games and aggression. So you can see we've got aggression as our outcome, we've got video games as a predictor, and the nature of the relationship is shown by the slope of this uh, plane, this, this regression plane. And so if we look at the bottom end, so this is when callous unemotional traits are at a very low level. So, so remember they're measured on a continuum. And you can see this blue arrow represents basically the, the relationship between video gaming and aggression. So it's a slightly positive relationship. Now as we move along the scale of callous unemotional traits, we could say, well, what about if someone's got kind of a, a medium amount of, or an average amount of callous unemotional traits? What's the relationship between video gaming and predicted aggression then? And again, I've, I've drawn on a blue line to represent this. And you can see it's at a pretty similar uh, slope to the, the blue arrow when we were looking at low levels of callous unemotional traits. So in other words, the slope of this regression plane isn't, isn't changing as callous unemotional traits 
increase, we don't see a change in the relationship between video gaming and predicted aggression. Now what happens when we look at the top end of the scale, so this is high levels of callous unemotional traits. Again, I've got a blue arrow that, that shows um, the relationship between video gaming and aggression. So it's just it's running parallel to the regression plane, so it just shows you kind of the slope of that plane. And again, there's not really very much of a difference. So essentially, the, the slopes of these blue arrows here do not change. So as callous unemotional traits increase, we don't see a change in the basic relationship between video gaming and aggression. Now what we have on the other side of the, of, uh, on the right hand side, is an example where we do get moderation. So what we were just talking about was when uh, callous unemotional traits isn't a, isn't a moderator. When it is a moderator, we get, <clears throat> an, well this is an example of the sort of situation we might get, although it's a, you know, it's a bit over egged or whatever. So again, if we look at low levels of callous unemotional traits, then the relationship between video gaming and aggression is actually negative. So this blue arrow is pointing downwards, indicating that the more video games you play, the less aggression you show at low levels of callous traits. What about medium levels of callous traits now? So we're looking kind of here. Again, we've got another blue arrow indicating the, the, the sort of shape of the relationship between video gaming and aggression. And this arrow is pretty flat, so it's kind of showing that there isn't a relationship between video gaming and uh, aggression. And what about our high levels of callous unemotional traits? So right at the top end of the scale, again, we've got a blue arrow to, to show us what's going on. And here we start getting a positive relationship. So this arrow is pointing upwards. Uh, so that's indicating that as video, the more video games you play, uh, the more aggression you, you display. So this is an example of moderation in that at low level of callous traits, there's actually a negative relationship between video gaming and aggression. At kind of average levels of uh, callous traits, there's basically no relationship between video gaming and aggression. And at high levels of callous unemotional traits, there is a positive relationship between video gaming and aggression. So the relationship between video gaming and aggression is changing as we move along the continuum of callous unemotional traits. So that's what moderation is. In terms of how we test this statistically, we basically do a fancy regression. So we do a regression in which we put the predictor, the moderator variable, and most importantly, the interaction between the two. And it's this interaction that tells us whether we have moderation. So if that interaction is significant, then it means that the moderator is moderating the relationship between the predictor and the outcome. So statistically, how we would test our uh, video gaming uh, example, we'd have our, our outcome of aggression, the predictor would be our spent video gaming, moderator would be where the person lies on this continuum of callous traits, and the, we would put in an interaction term uh, which tests whether um, basically the relationship between the predictor and the outcome changes as a function of the moderator. So that's moderation. And if you literally wanted to write out the aggression, uh, sorry, the regression model, it would look something like this. So we predict aggression from gaming, callous traits, and the interaction of the two. So here's the data for uh, our video game example. So you can see uh, that we've just, uh, as ever, we, each participant is a row in the SPSS data editor and each variable is a column. So uh, we've got an ID variable that just you know, identifies who the person was. Then we've got a score on the aggression variable. We've got a score on the video game variable. So this was hours per week that they played video games. And we've got a score on the callous unemotional traits. Uh, it tells us where on that continuum uh, the person uh, fell. So to run a, a moderation model is really pretty simple. So now we've installed these uh, this, these uh, Andrew Hayes dialog boxes. We can just go to Analyze and Regression and then select the Process tool. And what we get is uh, a dialog box, <clears throat> which is pretty straightforward. Um, now you can fit many, many different models. So here, where you get a drop-down box model number, uh, this process tool will run 74 <clears throat> different types of moderation, mediation type of analyses of varying complexity. 
Um, the ones that I cover in the, the book are models one and four. And one is a, is a basic moderation model and four is a basic mediation model. So the default option here is four because uh, lots of people will use this for mediation. But we want to change it to one because we're running a moderation model. Now it's really very straightforward. So we've got a slot to put our outcome variable. So our, our outcome was aggression. So we can pop that over there. Um, our independent variable, that's our predictor. So our predictor was uh, the hours spent playing video games. And then the M variables are uh, any moderators that we want to put in. Now we've only got one moderator, you could put several in and you know do more complicated uh, models than this and, and if you want to do that read Andrew Hayes's book is the best advice. Uh, we've just got this one moderator so we can drag it across like that and in a, in a sense that's all there is to it. Now there are some other options uh, which I go into a bit more detail in the book about. Um, the important ones which I, I won't really uh, kind of explain are uh, you, you follow up moderation generally with uh, simple slopes analysis and if you want to plot the results of that, then it's useful to tick on this box, generate data for plotting. Um, it's good to select heteroscedasticity consistent standard errors, because if you've got heteroscedasticity, that just means that your, your standard errors are, are going to be okay. So it's a, a pretty good thing to tick anyway. And the other thing for reasons, again, explained in the book, we quite often do uh, something called mean, uh, grand mean centering when we do moderation analysis. And uh, basically, you can get process to do that for you automatically by ticking that box there. So these are all useful things to, to tick, uh, suffice to say. So uh, select them and click on continue. And um, again, it's quite useful to have a look at, um, or basically to, to follow up this analysis by asking for uh, you know, various things that, that sort of break down the moderation effect and you can get those through this conditioning dialog box here. So just select both of those. I'm not going to go into them in a lot of detail but uh, again it is explained in the book. So click on continue, that's all there is to it. Click on OK and hopefully we should get some output at some point. <clears throat> a couple of things worth noting while SPSS is doing its business is you've got to be a bit careful with variable names. So uh, what the process tool does is it converts uh, variables to, uh, to eight character strings. So if you've got variables that um, are the same for the first eight characters, so say you had like aggression one and aggression two, uh, and you put them in the same analysis, then uh, process will get a bit confused by that because it will abbreviate them both to, to aggressi. It will, it will squish them to eight characters. Um, because they're the same and they're eight characters long, you'll get an error message. So we can see, for example, in this output, uh, that's, this is what it's done. So for each variable, it's abbreviated it to eight characters. So uh, this was a really called aggression, uh, and it's been abbreviated to aggressi, and vid games was a, a, has been abbreviated to vid game, because it, again it's been cut off at eight characters. So just be aware of that. Now, in terms of uh, interpreting whether we have significant moderation or not, it really couldn't be simpler than just looking at this part of the output down here, uh, where we basically have a regression. So it, it will have uh, you know centered things for us. And um, we, uh, so this is a basic regression table. So we've got each predictor, callous and emotional traits, uh, video games, and int one is the interaction. And it tells you below that this interaction represents video games by callous and emotional traits. So all we're really interested in doing in terms of interpreting whether moderation has occurred is literally looking at this p-value for the interaction. And if that p-value is less than 0 0.05 is the convention, then we say there's been significant moderation. So we can see callous and emotional traits, very significant predictor of aggression, uh, video game use, uh, significant predictor of regression. But the most important thing in terms of moderation is this interaction term, which is significant. And also its confidence interval does not include zero. So this beta value is uh, in, the, in the population is likely to be more than zero. So in other words, there is an effect in the, a moderation effect in the population. In terms of how we follow this up, we use uh, simple slopes analysis, which, uh, as I said, I'm not going to go into in massive amounts of detail particularly. 
All I will say is uh, we can look at this part of the output here. These are the conditional effects of um, <clears throat> the predictor on the outcome. So this is uh, this first row tells you whether we're looking at, um, at, you can kind of ignore the numbers really, this is sort of low levels of callous unemotional traits. Zero is average levels of callous unemotional traits, because remember it's been centred, so a zero is, is, the, is the mean, because it's uh, been centred around zero. And uh, this third value is uh, basically a, a positive, or like a high. This, these are actually kind of one or one standard deviation above or below the mean. So this is kind of like standard deviation below the mean, the mean level, and standard deviation above the mean. But you can think of them as just sort of low, average, high, if you like. And then the effect is uh, basically, again, another regression coefficient. So this is the, the effect of um, video games on aggression at low levels of callous unemotional traits. And you, if you look at the p-value, it's non-significant. So at low levels of callous unemotional traits, you don't get a relationship between video gaming and aggression. Then at medium levels of callous unemotional traits, again, if you read the p for the beta, there is a significant effect, and it's a, it's a positive beta. So that's showing there's a positive relationship between video gaming and aggression. And finally, at high levels of callous unemotional traits, uh, the beta value's gone up, it's a, it's a more positive relationship, and that's highly, highly significant. So basically, as we move through the continuum of callous unemotional traits, the relationship between uh, video gaming and aggression is goes from non-significant to positive and significant to even more positive and even more significant. And that's, at a basic level, that's all there is to it. So what about mediation? Well, in the book chapter, we've got a different example for mediation, and this is... Uh, based on some real research actually, and uh, a real research example. So the data are like, you know, they're someone's actual data. And uh, this was a study uh, looking at um, the relationship between pornography consumption and infidelity. So it was a study by Lambert et al. And what they were interested in is whether this relationship between uh, pornography consumption and infidelity uh, was mediated by uh, relationship commitment. Now, mediation is a different kettle of fish from moderation. So basically, you've got, you start off with some kind of relationship. So in this case, uh, we will be predicting that pornography consumption um, has a relationship with infidelity. So the, the more pornography you watch, the more likely you are to uh, be unfaithful. Now what mediation is all about is, is whether this simple relationship operates via a third variable. So in other words, is it the case that uh, pornography consumption has an effect on uh, infidelity because it's influencing some other variable? So uh, the mediated relationship looks, we get this sort of triangle of variables. So we have our predictor, pornography consumption, and it's predicting some kind of outcome, which is infidelity. And what we're suggesting is that there's some factor that's related to both of them that explains this relationship in some way. So in their study, what they predicted it was was relationship commitment. So they were basically saying that the more pornography you watch, so as the, as the predictor changes, that has a significant effect, so that's this red arrow here, has a significant effect on your relationship commitment. So you start feeling kind of less committed to your partner. And relationship commitment, sort of separately, has an influence on whether you're likely to be unfaithful or not. So this red arrow here, pathway B, indicates that. So we've got pornography affecting your relationship commitment, we've got relationship commitment affecting your, uh, the likelihood of you being unfaithful. And what mediation is suggesting, or if you have mediation, is it's saying that this relationship between your predictor and outcome will be weakened. Uh, in, ideally, if it's perfect mediation, it will be reduced to zero by including this mediator. So the relationship, we've called it C here, between the predictor and the outcome, once you include the moderator, uh, sorry, the mediator in the model, 
become zero. So we'd be saying this sort of C dash, it's called the direct effect, is reduced to zero. So if we have mediation, what it means is we should get a very small direct effect between our predictor and outcome, but a very large indirect effect. So the indirect effect is, is the effect of, in our example, the effect of pornography on um, infidelity operating through relationship commitment. So that would be the indirect effect, whereas the direct effect is, well, as the name suggests, it's the direct influence that pornography consumption has on infidelity. So we can see the actual example here, all I've done is just slot the names of the, of the constructs into the boxes. Um, so mediation would be shown by basically a significant indirect effect. So we can quantify this indirect effect, we can quantify um, basically the, the combined effect of these pathways A and B, and if that is significant, then we, we basically have a, a, a significant mediation. So in, in other words, if the indirect effect is, is kind of big enough, then uh, our relationship between pornography consumption and infidelity has been mediated by relationship commitment. Now, historically, there are uh, kind of other ways to think about mediation, and, and this comes back to this idea of this direct effect being close to zero or being very much reduced um, compared to when we didn't put our mediator into the model. But in terms of uh, how we look at it in the book, we talk more about uh, quantifying this indirect effect and seeing whether it's significant or not. So in terms of doing uh, mediation, you can see here we've got the data file from the book for the Lambert et al. study. And uh, three variables we have. We have uh, pornography consumption, and actually we're going to use the log transformed values. Um, we're, we've got a variable commitment, which is relationship commitment uh, scored 1 to 5, and we've got a variable representing uh, infidelity scored from 0 to 3. So, as ever in SPSS, uh, each row represents uh, a person in this study, and each of these columns is representing a variable. The variables we're interested in are just these ones, log consumption, commitment and infidelity. So to do mediation, we again use uh, Hayes' process tool. So we go to the Analyze menu. Um, in the Regression menu, we'll have this process tool that we've uh, now added in. And you can see we get this dialog box. It's the same as the one we use for moderation. Uh, this time, we want because we want to do mediation, we use model number four, and that's the default. So we don't need to change that. Um, We've got an outcome variable. In this case, our outcome variable was infidelity. So we can pop that over there. Uh, our independent variable, that's the predictor. So in this case, that was pornography consumption. And the M variable, uh, this time, is going to be our mediator. And our mediator was relationship commitment. So we can pop that over there. So basically, that's kind of all we need to do. Um, it will do bootstrapping for the indirect effect. Um, and the default options for that bootstrapping is fine. Um, we can have a look at some of the options. Uh, this gives a slightly different dialog box. Uh, the first, uh, some of the options we looked at for moderation don't apply for mediation models. So for mediation models, we really want to look at the four options down the bottom. We can ask for some effect sizes. Uh, I'm not going to go into them, but they're explained in the book if you want them. You may be familiar with the Sobel test, which is uh, another test that's quite often used in mediation. Personally, uh, I would just look at the indirect effect and not bother with the Sobel test, but um, you, you can select it if you want. Um, we can ask it for some information about uh, the, the total effects model, uh, can be useful. And we can ask it to compare indirect effects, which also can be useful. So. You can maybe select those options, click on continue, and then if we click on OK, it will uh, merrily do a mediation analysis for us, hopefully. Uh, now because it's using bootstrapping, this can take a bit of a bit of time to do, and uh, so I'll just sit here awkwardly twiddling my thumbs, waiting for something to happen, and then uh, eventually, here we go, twiddle, 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 twiddle. So it's running through it all. Ah, there we go. So we've got some output. So uh, what this output tells us. Now, first of all, we get uh, a kind of uh, 
Well, we basically get a regression for uh, pornography consumption as a predictor of relationship commitment. So this is just checking that our predictor variable predicts our mediator and uh, we've got a regression coefficient for it and uh, you need to sort of check the p-value to see whether that's less than 0.05. In this case it is, which means that pornography consumption significantly predicts relationship commitment, which is, uh, you know, useful. Um, now the second block of text down here is uh, referring to a model in which relationship commitment and pornography consumption are both predicting the outcome which was infidelity. So we can have a look whether uh, whether relationship commitment predicts infidelity. So it's got a beta of minus 0.27. That's highly significant. The p-value is uh, zero you know, to four decimal places. So that's a very significant predictor. And again, we can look at uh, pornography consumption uh, as a predictor of uh, infidelity. And that is still uh, that's significant. Uh, with a beta of 0.46 and a significance value less than 0.05. So, yeah, that just sort of tells us that the, the relationships we would expect to be significant are. So, uh, both relationship commitment and pornography predict the outcome, which is important, but also it's important that uh, pornography consumption predicts um, relationship commitment, which uh, we saw in the first model. So then, in terms of uh, working out whether mediation has happened, the main thing that we're interested in is here, this indirect effect of X on Y. So this is the indi indirect effect of pornography consumption on um, infidelity, and it's the indirect effect via commitment. So this is why uh, it's labelled commitment, uh, it's commitment to eight characters. So the question is, is this significant? And the way to tell whether it's significant is that's the size of the effect, so that's kind of a beta value for the indirect effect of 0.127. And we're interested in whether this bootstrapped confidence interval includes zero or not. So this confidence interval is going to give us uh, a rough idea of what the population value of that indirect effect is. <clears throat> it's a 95% confidence interval, so if it doesn't contain zero, then basically our effect is significant at the 0.05 level. But more important, it means that the population value is not zero, or is very unlikely to be zero anyway. So we've got a lower confidence interval here of 0 0.017, uh, and we've got an upper, uh, upper value of the confidence interval of 0.296. So that means the population value of the indirect effect lies somewhere between 0 0.02 roughly and about 0.3. So in other words, it's positive. If that confidence interval doesn't contain zero, so the population value is, is likely to be a bigger value than zero. In other words, there is an indirect effect of commitment. So in terms of determining whether you have a mediation effect, that's what you really need to do, is look at this indirect effect and see whether the confidence interval contains zero. If it doesn't contain zero, then you can conclude that you have a, a significant mediating effect. Uh, the rest of the output mainly is to do with effect sizes, which I'm not going to talk about, but if you're interested in those, then uh, get, you know, steal, steal the book and have a look, because that does talk about the input, uh, sorry, the output in more detail. Okay, and that's all there is to it.